Hello and welcome to this new video on my channel. My name is Dr. Babila Tachu and today I am going to show you how to illustrate this mango as a vector illustration using the mesh tool of the free software Inkscape. The mesh tool is found here on the left from version 0.92 of Inkscape. If you are using a laptop, there are chances that these last three menus will be truncated so that you could access them only by clicking on these chevrons and choosing mesh. The gradient mesh tool allows you to create photorealistic illustrations in a very short time and without expertise. Imagine you were to draw this mango from scratch without any expertise as an illustrator and you were attempting to customize all the shades and colors to give it depth and feel and a three-dimensional effect. I bet you it is going to take ages, but with the gradient mesh tool it is a simple thing. The first step is for you to find a photo of what you wish to illustrate. Here we are going to use a mango, but we could use the same skill set for illustrating a banana, any fruit, other objects, photos of human body parts or machines, and much more. The first step is to import a real world image onto Inkscape. So let us go on to Google and search for a mango. I locate this one, which I could copy or snip off using the free green shot software and I will go to Inkscape and paste it. Alternative ways of importing could be by copy-paste or by drag and drop if you already have the image saved on your computer. Now we have the image on our artboard. After importing the image, it will be good to rotate the image so that the longest patterns that run across the length of the object is vertical on the computer screen. This way, it is easy for you to conceive how the gradient will operate relative to the mesh that is from top to bottom rather than from left to right. So you want to align the pattern to the columns of the mesh you're going to create later on. Now we need to create a new layer. So we have the image on one layer and our art on the other. To do this, go to layer, layers down here below, or use the keyboard shortcut shift Control l Now this is our lowest layer. We need to lock it. You do that by clicking on this part lock to lock it so that we do not end up moving it or altering or deleting the layer or any objects on it. And then we will create a new layer down here by clicking on this plus sign, then naming the layer if we wish and choosing add. I hope you see how it is highlighted with a light gray shade so I know I am on layer 2. This way, we are going to draw our object on layer 2 using the one on layer 1 as guide while layer 1 is inactive. Next, we will use the Bezier or Pen tool and try to trace out the outlines of the mango. So, to use this tool, you click to create a node, then go to the next point, click and pull in one direction or the other to curve the line. So we will use that technique and do some clicking and dragging to be able to outline the curves. And here you wish to set the nodes or clicks at the places where you have imaginary valleys and hills or troughs and crests and aiming not to create so many nodes. At this stage, it must not be perfect. We are going to fine tune the drawing later on. When you are done drawing, pick up the Edit Path by Notes tool and click on the outline and begin to adjust it to fit the outline of your target object, which in my case is the mango. I am going to pull this node to have the outline sit on the mango, then select this one and delete to soften the node. And here we have handles we can use to adjust the outline. I will go further to grab this node and bring it close to the object. 
then select this one below at the tip and maybe delete if it is too much. Grab this one on the side and pull it close. Same with these nodes on the right. Then come up here and pull this straight part out. Use this handle to adjust the curve. I will select this node up here and use handles to adjust the curve again. And I will continue doing this till I'm satisfied. So I have adjusted the outline and I am satisfied with the shape I have. We are aiming at getting a shape that looks like the object and not at getting an exact clone of it. Look how fast you could do the editing. Indeed, I find this feature pretty good in Inkscape than say in Illustrator. It can allow you to edit pretty fast. When done, I am going to move my outline out of the way and over here so I can see the photograph. I will go to Object, Fill and Stroke to call the color palette up here on the right. Then we will give a flat color to the mango by using the eyedropper or color picker tool right here. I will hit the color picker tool, then find a nice yellow color here on the mango to fill it with the color. Basically, what you do with the eyedropper or color picker tool is you copy and use the color values from an existing image. Next, we want to select our Mesh Gradient tool. There are different ways of activating the Mesh tool. One way is to click on this Mesh tool here, then make sure this Mesh Gradient is selected on the tool control bar up here, then Create Gradient in this field is also selected, then go ahead to define a number of rows and columns across which the gradient will transfer and click on the edge of your object and double click. And we notice the mesh is divided into a lattice of rows and columns and up here you see how many rows and columns we defined. If you happen to change the number of rows and columns, you need to click out of the tool for instance, here on Radial Gradient and again on the Mesh Gradient tool here on the right to let the change apply. And you may ask, how many rows and columns do I need? And the answer is, you would want to have mesh lines where there is a significant curve or color transition from one color to another on your image. Here, for instance, we could envisage one, two, three, four columns and one, two, three rows for our drawing to keep it simple. So I am going to enter those values up here and validate. By arranging the gradients as such, we are adding dimensions to our drawing. So the colors will not look flat, but will come across in different dimensions and give us depth and the feel of a three-dimensional object. Now, you may ask, how do we select these points and what difference is there between them? We could select by clicking directly on them or by using this Edit Paths by Note tool, which by the way is different from the selection tool we see up here. I will go ahead and click on this diamond here. The diamond represents what we call gradient stops. The way to understand it is that the color begins from a point and fades across. Here, this yellow is fading to white. These circle nodes are called handles. You notice that they turned to arrowheads once I clicked on the diamond. These allow us to define how the gradient transfers across to the other node. This is the place we can pull up and pull down or from the left or to the right to have a curve effect across our object. You may not only access this when you click on the diamond tool. Clicking on it directly allows the circle to turn into an arrowhead which you can drag about. Looking at our original image, we notice that the patterns converge and tapper on the bottom. So we will begin by pulling along the gradient stops 
so they taper towards the bottom. I am going to do that sequentially for each of the gradient stops and it is important to be patient so that you get a smooth pattern. And you may wonder how I define my curvatures. We are basically trying to imitate these curvatures we see on the object. So just be patient with me while I try to adjust the converging patterns. Usually it may take a while, but for the result we get later, it is worth the trouble taking all our time to do it best. We can also grab the circles called handles to adjust the curvature. The color patterns also converge on the top. So I will repeat the same procedure up here on the top by pulling along the gradient stops so they taper towards the top. I am going to do that sequentially for each of the gradient stops. Then we will select the handles and pull along to let the mesh have a round feel reflecting the curvature of the object. After adjusting the gradient stops on the top and bottom, we could go to the middle of the object and adjust both handles and gradient stops so that they reflect the outer curvature of our object. And fine tuning at this stage may take quite a bit of time. Just be patient and get it right by adjusting each handle or gradient stop that will let you have an award winning illustration. I am going to do this gradually while talking about the challenges you could face here. Again, you already notice as I am changing them that it is a painstaking task and that you may easily lose count what you have altered and what you've not. However, for the result you would get later on, it is worth the trouble concentrating here and getting the things just right. And of course, this is much faster than trying to draw this from scratch without any help that is given to you by the mesh tool. Also, I have a strategy I can share with you on how to do this in an effective way. And here it goes. For objects with lots of depth of color, I prefer beginning with a few mesh columns and rows and adding them sequentially as I go along. You can add a new mesh simply by having the mesh tool selected and double clicking on the edge of your mesh outline here. The new one will take the shape of those you already produced. So I often divide the number of columns and rows I want into two or three, get a simpler outline I can easily manipulate and add the other nodes on the fly. I'm gonna take Ctrl Z to remove this line I added to the mesh. Please watch this channel as I will make a tutorial on this using say a banana that comes with many more shades and more difficult curvatures. So we are done. Now if we click on one diamond and select it, we can click on the eyedropper or color picker tool, then click on our reference image to choose a color and that color will be transferred to that area on our object. We can also click on one of these diamonds or gradient stops and then on the eyedropper tool and hold down the shift key to sequentially select other diamonds and click on an area of our reference image to attribute a color to the selection. For the sake of this tutorial, I could do that sequentially for each of the diamonds or for each of the major lines of the grid. Again, this may be a painstaking task based on the number of shades and gradients you wish to represent. But the nice thing here is that as a beginner, it is better doing it diamond by diamond so you may not lose count what you have altered and what you've not altered since the color changes and you can immediately compare the color of your illustration with that of the original image to know if you should pick a different shade from your reference object. Again, for the result you will get later on, it is worth the trouble concentrating here and picking and dropping different color sheets one after the other. And of course, this is much faster than trying to draw this from scratch without any help that is given to you by the mesh tool.
After finishing, I will select the object and go to the fill and stroke palette and select stroke paint and choose no paint. After you're done, you can still select the gradient mesh tool and adjust the curvatures or colors as much as you want. And now we see we have a decently looking mango here. But we also notice we have some brown spots here. And representing these brown spots would even add to how natural our illustration looks. I am going to show you how to simulate this. I am going to draw an ellipse and use the color picker tool to give it the color of the dots. I could then make copies of this if I wish by taking Ctrl D or Ctrl C and V and pull the copies and bring them to sit on our illustration. So I'm going to select them one by one and place them on different parts of our mango. Afterwards, I can make more duplicates and spread or rotate the patterns along the mango so we have bruise marks and make the mango look natural. Next, I'm going to pick up the Bezier tool again and trace this stump or stalk up here by pulling and dragging where necessary. Then I will grab it and take it to the side and then use the mesh tool to give it a 2x2 two two mesh. I will do that by adjusting the values up here and then validating. Then I'm going to pull the gradient stops to adjust the look a little and where necessary I am going to also drag and pull the handles to change the look. And finally, select the different gradient stops and give the color of the stump. I will do it to the right side here and repeat the procedure for the left side. And you see it is taking good shape. I will now go up here and take stroke paint, no paint, to have the stroke away. Once I am done, I will now bring this stump to sit on our object and then go up here and select lower selection to bottom. And here we have a cool mango. Mastering the mesh tool in Inkscape is going to let you illustrate objects and give them a three-dimensional look. If you have been using the previous videos to learn how to do illustrations, please comment below and share your experience and expectations with those who are trying to begin now. If this is your first time here, however, I would like to have you give a thumbs up below and subscribe because this video series is all about helping you to effectively illustrate and communicate your research ideas and work. And this is going to change your study and work life positively. Otherwise, see you in the next videos where we will use similar skills to illustrate a more difficult object like say a banana. Bye bye.